and just in heaven. This is our grace. Together we now sing, my Father, bless the dear the words of your hand, you and me magnify the mighty God. Angels in heaven, they say, We all the end. Together, we are my father, and be your name, Holy Ghost, bless us. The works of your hands, of your hands, magnify thee, angels in heaven. They say, together we now sing, my Father, blessed be your name, Holy Ghost, blessed be your name. Now, our dear Lord. Is on the 
He's the lion of Judah. The lion, the lion of Judah. Creator that was not created. Yes, shall I. Yes, shall I. Hello, I don't know, mighty God. Page to A. By the power of the shadow, I shall die. I Worship the Lord, worship Him, yes, praise Lord. Him. Yes, oh, you are Eshadai. Hallelujah, You are incomparable God. Before you know, we're still you are covenant keeping oh. God. You are God. God. Thank you for your God that is the truth. Oh, glory, 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 glory. There's no more like you. Thank you for your steadfast love. You are the lily of the Thank valley, God. Of the Holy Ghost. You are the rose of Sharon. We worship you. You are the light of God. Where would we have been? God. Thank you, Father. I live there forever. There is no God like you. Take control, Father. Now I'm God. Lord, come and take a minute forever. We know you are the soon coming king. And those that will preach here. Oh Lord, we adore you. Father, we worship you. Magnify your name. I have myself. I worship you. Lord, I worship you. I worship you. I worship you. I worship you. You are worthy of my worship. You are worship. You have to be worship forever. You will know the day of my worship. I worship you. In heaven. Thank you, Heavenly Father, King of Glory. Ancient of days, we bless and worship you. Yes. People yes. have said, and this evening to feed from your word. Mm -hmm. Ah, the Bible yes. said, The entrance of your word brings life, gives understanding to prayer. You bring, oh uh, God, we pray to Lord. us. We're going to your word. Those that are sick will be oh, from Jesus Christ. Thank Those that are to be delivered in the name of Jesus Christ. You have never feel Get understanding and insight. In the name of Jesus Christ, that our lives will not be the same. Mm -hmm. Oh, we'll grow from grace to grace, from strength to mm strength. -hmm. We said, Amen, Lord Jesus. Thank you. I know God, as we hear your word, that our faith will grow mm -hmm. in the name of Jesus. Amen, Lord. Go to meet, try, and the that will come our way. Mm -hmm. Grow to help us to pray more. Grow to help us to know you more mm -hmm. in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Jesus, mighty name, we pray, and everyone shall say, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Evening, and I want to welcome all of you to this evening Bible study. I want to welcome in a special way our brother Miles, Miles Jane, and Elise Lee. Uh, Miles, are you okay to show us your face? And Elise, are you okay to... To introduce yourself, show us your face. Thank you. Oh, nice to meet you. Yeah, we're not seeing your face. Thank you. Oh, okay, thank you. Actually, uh, here, uh, actually, I was invited by one of my brother in the church to do some uh, fellowship, okay. and he, he was invited uh, too. And the pastor name is Inners. Oh, I, I, I can understand. Yeah, thank you for invitation. And oh, this is El Sili. And currently, um, currently I'm living in China, but uh, uh, one, uh, some of my relatives is living in Markham. So, uh, I will visit her from time to time, and I also attend some offline fellowship, uh, in the Church of Canada. And 
uh, also thank you for all of you and uh, I have been Christian for about for about five years. I'm a doctor. I'm a doctor in China. Uh, yeah. actually, I'm the only one who believe in Jesus my family. But uh, in uh, cause in the past three years, uh, and uh, in hospital, I saw lots of people being died, and I found that uh, if there's uh, no faith and no belief, <laughs> people's life in the world is so helpless. So. I want to find the answer in the Bible. Actually, at the beginning, I I watched lots of books of the religion, but finally I found Bible is the best. So it can give me, actually, it give me the way of life. Amen. Uh, so I'm, I'm 28 years old now, and nice Good to see all of you here also. <laughs> Thank you. Third World Apostolic Church. We are based in Newmarket, Ontario. Um, I'm sure it was uh, Mike that invited you, right? Uh, no, no, you. My you invite, yes, you invite <laughs> male's brother. You oh. me. All right, so good to see you. So, me too. You are presently studying uh, trials and temptation, useful tools for believers' growth. This is a very interesting topic. I will request that you please send me your email address and I'll send the script to okay. you. Okay, okay, okay. Email address and I'll send the script to you uh, after the, the Bible study. Uh, we okay. started studying this thing for the past, this is our sixth week of study on trials and temptation. We decided to take this thing because we know that we are at the end time and uh, a lot of people do not know that trials and temptations are part of the significant part of, of the package for being a Christian. So if you don't know this ahead of time, when trials and temptation come your way, you easily faint. So uh, that is why we are here. And uh, yes, I've seen your email. I will, at the end of the meeting, I will text, send you the, the script. So last week, which was our uh, fifth, fifth week of study, we, 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 we were asked to pray for grace grace to be able to overcome trials because they will come. Definitely they will come. Any Christian who is not aware of it is like a student enrolled in a college, in a university, or in any academic program who is not conscious of the fact that exams will come. And you know, as a student, if you don't pass your exams, you will not move to the next grade. And if you don't, if you don't pass well, you may not find a good job when you complete your training. And so it's, uh, you may not even be able to advance you into a higher degree. So it is very important that uh, we know about this thing. Jesus Christ, I tell you now before it takes place, so that when it takes place, you will know and remember that I have told you. So ask for grace to be able to stand. We say there is no temptation greater than you that will come. Amen. There is no temptation. We are at different levels in our Christian race. And the one that affects me may not be the one affect you know the one that will affect the other person so because of that god will not allow any temptation that is greater than us to come because not the, you you will not be tempted beyond your own syllabus and strength you are supposed to be able to uh stand and we said we should pray in advance this was seriously emphasized last we pray in advance before the problems come if you pray in advance, your prayers will overtake your problems. Instead of stepping into the problem as you move forward, you step into victory. It's very good to pray ahead of time. Pray before your exams, pray before your marriage, pray for, as you pray for your marriage as a young person. You begin to pray for your children's children. As, a, as parents, uh, as grandparents, we are not only praying for ourselves now or for our children. We are not praying for our children's children until the fourth generation. That was our prayer focus yesterday night, praying for our grand grandchildren, great grandchildren, so that they will have better Christian lives, so that they will, they will have hearts to uh, to worship God. So pray in advance, so that your your you are not overtaken by uh, problems. You see, you cannot overcome trials if we are not patient. To be able to overcome trials, we need to be patient. Some people are not patient. So patient is not one of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. It's a fruit. It's something you have to practice. 
calm down, calm down, calm down and be patient so that you'll be able to uh, come. We develop patient through waiting. You develop patient through trials and we have different problems, but at the same level. Yes, we de develop pro uh, patients through trials and different trials at different levels. The Holy Spirit will bring our minds, will bring our minds when temptation comes. The Holy Spirit will direct us, will help us when temptation comes. Amen. So we should uh, be waiting on the Holy Spirit. And we should not allow any person or anything to influence us. The environment is very, very slippery. That is, sin is becoming oh. attractive and people are prepared to do anything uh, to take sin as pleasure and they will do anything to sin. We are to develop perseverance, which is the same thing as patience. Because you don't have control over trials, but you can control it. Amen. You cannot control the economy. The government controls it. You cannot control the weather. It is in God's hands. You cannot con you can control yourself, but you cannot control the other person. That is why you need to be patient. But you can control how you react to the situation. That is where patience uh, come in. Amen. Hard times make us pray more. Pray ahead of time. Some people only pray when times when they have trials. So, because we don't want to have trials before we pray, we are advised to pray ahead of time so that we'll be able to so that we'll be strong to uh, uh, to run this race. Amen. Uh, we have <laughs> our brother Pastor John Agemome from the states. Arizona, he will be coordinating the meeting today, and we have other members already joining. So at this junction, I want to uh, hand over to our big brother, Pastor John, at the moment to continue from where we stopped. We are on page five of 13. The Lord. Welcome every one of you, especially our sister. Lee, God bless you. It's no accident that you are the first Christian in your family. God intends that your entire family be saved, and it's going to be through you. So there's great task ahead. They are going to see the light because light overcomes darkness. Don't be afraid. The Lord is with you. So long as you are faithful to the Lord, he will fight your battles for you. And you, didn't, you don't need to be fretful at all. It is well with you and welcome to this forum in Jesus' name. Amen. My friend is welcome to, we will not see your face, but God bless you. Very good. And all that's who are here today, the Lord bless you and reward you in Jesus' name. Amen. Yes. We'll continue from where we stopped. I remember we stopped um, about waiting patiently to endure. When you are faced with trials, be patient. Pastor has already talked about patience. Yes, patience is very, very important. It's developed through trials. It doesn't just come as a gift. When you pray, for example, and God gives you and answer, you are encouraged. You are so happy. But sometimes when you pray, you may not get immediate answer. Mm -hmm. Don't be discouraged at that because it helps you to develop patience. When Job was tried, you know, at the end, it was a glorious experience for him. But have patience with God. If you didn't have patience with God, you would have caused God and die according to the wife. See, you know this, you are still trusting God. Just cause God and that. We don't have to cause God in trial. Rather, we rely on him. It's not a time yes. to grumble. A time of trial is not a time to grumble. It's not a time to complain, but a time to wait patiently and trust that the Lord will intervene. 
Amen. Heavenly Father, as we continue this study today, we ask the Lord to grant us understanding and revelation. Not only do we have to have this revelation, but Lord, the grace to obey your word and live in accordance in Jesus' precious name. Amen. 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 Let's talk about our desires. Our desires and temptation. James chapter 1, 13 to 14. Somebody can read. Whoever sees it first, please read. James chapter 1, from verse 13 to 14. James chapter 1. Yeah. Verse, verses 13 to 14. 13, 13 to 14. Yes. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempted he any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Man, praise uh, the Lord. So oh, that's yeah. one thing that God cannot do. There are a few things that God cannot do. God cannot lie. His word is yea and amen. When he mm -hmm. sends for his word, his word will be never return to him void. God is unchangeable. Mm -hmm. He changes situations for your good. God cannot lie. So, the, the, and God cannot tempt you to sin. No, but God can give you a test or a trial. So we define that one at the beginning of this of this study between tests, temptations, and trial. The difference mm -hmm. generally temptation is an inducement to do evil. And what the Bible say, save my son. When sinners entice thee, consent thou not. Do not agree with them. Sin doesn't just happen. Sin is incubated. Is it's a process. Committing sin is a process. It doesn't just happen. Yeah. Yes. If bad thought just come to you, that's not a sin. Bad thought yeah. just come to you. That's not a sin. But what yeah. you do with bad thought matters. If you meditate upon it, let it incubate, let it develop, at the end, sin will arise. But if you know a thought is coming to you and it's evil, what does the Bible say? Just cast it away right there and then. You don't have to wait. Get behind me, Satan. Amen. Yes. No one should say, God is tempting me. Who hmm. cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. But each person is tempted when he's dragged. Yes, when they are dragged away by their evil desires and enticed. We are going to dwell much on this. It's very, very important to know how some temptations actually take place because of our own desires. Yeah? If our desires are good and God pleasing, we we'll hardly fall into temptation. But if they are evil, they are likely to lead to sin. We might think that God is tempting us to see what we do. But according to James chapter 1, that is not the case. The tempter is the devil. Devil wants Christian to fall. Devil wants Christian to be weak, to be discouraged. That's the objective of Satan. John chapter 10, verse 10 says, The thief coming on, but for to steal. To kill and to destroy everything that Satan does, they are summed up there. He doesn't want any Christian to be effective in ministry. No. Left to Satan, I wouldn't be alive right now. But thanks be to God. My life is in God's hand. That's why I'm alive now. When I was sleeping, it's not because, oh, I pray so much, I pray so much. So my prayer. Sustained me. When I'm not conscious. I'm sleeping. I'm sleeping. Who fights for me is the Lord. And the Lord who fights for you and me does not sleep and he does not slumber. This should encourage us. 
Praise God. Hallelujah. God already knows what we'll do when placed in a certain situation. The situation reveals to all that what we we'll do. In reality, James chapter 1 says it's our desire that are the source of temptation. This explains why everyone is tempted differently. Different temptation come to different people. And it depends on their disposition. It depends on where they live, their lives and dislikes, uh, their environment, their friends, etc., etc. So many factors. Now, this is uh, page six of the team. Let's, let's uh, illustrate that one because this is a Bible study. Is going to be highly interactive. We want to explain that. Institution reveals to us what we do. In reality, Jesus says it's our desires that are the source of temptation. This explains why everyone is tempted differently. Can somebody substantiate that? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh -huh. To begin with, Temptation in or test in other way is not the actual. But when you when you when you begin to consider or engage in it, that's when it becomes sin. For instance, we begin to think when we begin to think with our flesh rather than our hearts, we are bound to fall into temptation. Reasoning with your flesh, you think of the immediate benefit. You think of the immediate enjoyment. You think of the immediate satisfaction. But when you think with your head, you will say beyond that and say, no, if I do this thing, definitely this is the consequence. There, of course, there are consequences to an action. If I go and steal, to satisfy myself, satisfy my flesh, oh, I will have more to myself. But if you think beyond that, assuming I'm caught, assuming I'm caught, think of the consequences. So that will drive you to say no. We should always remember not to yield to our natural satisfaction or instincts. Otherwise, we keep falling into temptation. They will come, as you said, they will come. So we should pray to God not to yield to our natural satisfaction or instinct. Rather, we should think with our heads rather than our flesh so that we think are right and do the right thing always. That's my contribution. Amen. Thank you so much, my sister. God bless you. Any Amen. other thing? Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, my little contribution. Temptation comes differently. Just our faces are different. That's our, our needs are different. Our thoughts are different. And not just that, our beliefs. Because the way the kind of Christian reason is not how you that spiritually feel the reason. Some people think it doesn't matter. And when that thought comes, do it. You know, the enemy, which is uh, the devil, his whole suggestion is now. Nah. If you don't recognize the voice of devil, you surely fall temptation. Because it's quick. He wants you to quickly do that thing. And he's putting pressure. Now, go there. Just do it. Don't matter. You just do like this. We'll give you an idea. But where comes the spiritual uh, thing is, is that you listen to the still voice of God. Yes. So there are forces. That of Satan is, is, is rush. It, it's like powerful right now. Do that. Do it just now. But when you listen, there is a still voice behind. No. Don't you know you are a child of God? Why will you do such? Can Jesus? You are a child of God now. And you have to 
represent who you believe. You know, Jesus mm. would have done this. That's how he came. You can't do that. When you hear that voice, oh, this is what I will follow. I don't want that. That one that is bothering that is rush. Then yeah. you are guided. Like what a uh, pastor said, temptation will surely come. But when you yeah. hear that is when it's dangerous. As you come, you you take care of yourself and know which and which. There must be left and right. Choose yes. which you will follow. Praise the Lord. And another thing is just like my sister said, that we should always seek the Lord. Very good. When we hear the word of God clearly, we don't have, we don't need to debate it. We don't need to debate it. The word of God is clear. This is what God says. Just like an example during a uh, uh, time, Eve gave room for herself to fall into temptation because he was now debating with snakes. Snakes say, uh, did God say you should, you should not eat any of the fruit? You know, he came stylishly to say, did God say you should not eat any of the fruit? Eve now said, eh, eh, eh. it's only the one in the center. So she started debating, debating with, the, uh, uh, with Satan. So familiarity stepped in. So we don't, when we hear the word of God, then we are hearing the word of God quite all right. Uh, God was speaking to Adam and Eve every evening. But they never, they, they, uh, Eve never took heed not to debate with any other uh, uh, person, or not to talk of animal. He didn't even say, how come animal is talking to me? We are the only human being here. So mm -mm, this one is not uh, right. Then Adam on his own, Adam had no business eating the fruit when he came. He would have said, okay, let me see clarity from God before I succumb. He too didn't. He didn't. Instead, he fell into it with his clear eyes too. So we should yeah, always... When we read God's word, let's just take it as God's word and it's clear. There's no need to debate. Uh, it's not like this. It's like that. Uh, do you know that's the song? In that case, somehow you'll be convinced half. Somehow you'll not be convinced half. You, do, you will not know why you fall into the temptation yourself. So we should always uh, take clarity not to debate from God and not to debate on any word that is clear in the Bible. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Mr. Regina. Mm -hmm. That's true. So, Praise hallelujah. Lord. Yeah, my little contribution is uh, still on the different temptation, that we are tempted differently. Yes. So, I just want to emphasize that areas of uh, where we encounter temptations actually differ differ to the different age groups, differs to the different places and time of where we are, and it also differs with our desires and our want. So these things constitute and lead to different areas of temptation. What do I mean? The, the, the temptations that go to young people come when they deliberately refuse to act into the word of God. Yes, sometimes uh, you may know the word of God, but as they begin to mingle, they allow youthful pressure to they know they are carried away and they allow people to influence their lives without mm -hmm. guiding themselves with the word of God. So even as they grow, They've known the word of God. They've been afraid to see. They know those areas that they've been easily tempted. But a time in their life will come. That's why I say the time. Maybe now they're in high school. They're in university. Parents are no longer there. Who encourages them to study the word of God? And now they forget that this thing coming to me now is temptation. How do I avoid it? How do I go identify it and to now ward myself off it. 
because they don't have that person that is always there telling them not to do this, reminding them to pray in the morning before they leave. This is how you're going to do it. This And again, it now goes on and on to now. Oh, they've entered a new sphere and now they want this. They want that. And so even the way they now want to go about getting it, even if it is areas that they already know that is evil, not right. People still try to lure them into it. So how can we really avoid temptations and succeed? Because they will come. We've been told that, whoa, to, where they say, whoa, to whom that temptation will come from? That it will be better for it to be a milestone be hung around the earth, those that will make us sin. So we are supposed to be careful with the people we mingle with, who will lead, or who will lead us into temptation. Because mm -hmm. sometimes you are so carried away that you think, oh, this is a man of God. This is a woman of God. He may not know what he's telling me is right. Oh, this person really, really knows the word. This person is this. This person is that. Mm -hmm. You 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 will not you will not understand, but when you know, when you know that you are listening to the word of God, when you know that you have read the word of God, are you hearing me? Yes, yes, yes. yes. So then you will understand that God is going to give you a way out then you understand that we are not supposed to lean on myself. Do not put your trust in man. Do not trust man for strength. Do not trust man to be your mentor. Because mm -hmm. we, we watched a movie yesterday. The mother, the girl was conscious of who she was. She was always coming to the mother to ask questions when she sees something that is tempting her outside. And the mother told her, you can always come to me or you go to an adult that you trust. And she started going to the adult that she trusts. And the adult was leading her astray. The mom gave her, go to an adult that you trust. At that time, she didn't see again. She was blindfolded. Oh, my mom said I should go to the adult that I trust. I trust this adult. And she didn't realize anymore that this woman is leading her astray. <laughs> That is where our own empowerment with the word of God comes in, not relying on man. You should say, oh, what does the Bible say concerning this situation? What am I supposed to do? And, and, and you will be able to overcome. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. I just add to that. My wife was talking. She said the youth particularly sin when they go outside the word of God. I want to quickly say that every one of us yes, yes. will sin when we go outside the word of God. So yes. the word of God becomes our guiding principles. Yes. Any cancer you receive from whoever, whoever, a bishop, a cardinal, a pastor, an evangelist, any cancer you receive, compare it with the word of God before yes. you receive it. Otherwise, you will be misled. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 33, 1 Corinthians 15, 33, say, evil communication corrupts good manners. Mm -hmm. So, mind whom you are talking with. If a Christian brother tells you something that is outside the word of God, don't take it. I have preached in my ministry in our church to the brethren, Anytime I come to you with any teaching that is not in the word of God, don't take it. Rebuke me, correct me. If I come to you with a teaching that is not in the word of God, tell me, brother, this is not what the Bible tells us. So how did Jesus overcome? He overcame with the word of God. We studied mm -hmm. that previously. Satan came to him and said, Turn this stone to become bread. We are tempted by our desire and time. Jesus was hungry. That was his thing. He desired food. The timing was food. And he said, turn this stone to become bread. Mm -hmm. And Jesus 
again, use the word of God and said, get behind me, Satan. For man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. So it is with the word of God, you will always overcome. Mm -hmm. Remember the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 6, take the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, so that you are able to quench every flaming doubts of the enemies. So the enemies will always come into our hearts, our thoughts, what you are thinking about. For instance, you are broke. You are thinking about how to make money. Mm -hmm. As somebody just comes to you to give you a wrong principle that you know is against the word of God. Tells you to cheat. I mean, to falsify invoice. Test the young lady or the old lady as it were. Just go out with this guy. He's rich enough to support you. He will support you. And then you'll be tempted because you are not able to control your reaction. Like we say, you cannot control the external forces. But you can control your reaction. As a young man, let me share this testimony with you. I was not married. I had not met this beautiful lady on my side. We had known, but there was nothing no romantic relationship. I visited a Christian sister and she hosted me in her brother's room. In her brother's room, there was an inscription. Save me from the beautiful guests, the ugly ones I can avoid. That was the inscription on the brother's room. Save me from the beautiful guests, the ugly ones I can avoid. When I got home, I wrote my own inscription. Lord, save me from the Christian sisters, the unbelievers uh -huh. I can avoid. Because I knew that I was not going to come down to an unbelieving guy to say, hey, I love you. I want to have a chat with you. It was zero. But there were some Christian sisters who were close, who would want us to chat and talk, and from there lead me to sing. Yes. You must die against every opening of the enemy. Remember, we had said that the Bible tells us when we read Job that he this Satan told God, it's not because you built a hedge around him. Try him and see if he will not cause you. So the hedge, God had built a hedge around every Christian. Is it sin that will create a crack? in your flesh that we enable the enemies to come in. So you must, we must guide our hearts with the word of God, our thoughts and our desire. Age, yes. My mother is 93, 1993 years old. I will not be asking her not to commit fornication now. She doesn't have that. But what about unforgiveness? So there will be somebody that has offended you whom you are finding it difficult to forgive. Mm -hmm. Because you are refusing, ref, uh, finding it difficult to forgive that person, then you have opened yourself to the devil. So it comes in at different levels, at different age, at different at different uh, levels, right? Therefore, whatever level you are, we are, we find ourselves, we match it with the word of God. Otherwise, falling is very, very um, easy. easy. See, the line yeah. of sense yeah. is very narrow. Yes. Before you know it, if you are not careful, you don't drift into nonsense. The, sin, the line between darkness and light is very narrow. If you are not careful with the word of God, you will not know when the Holy Spirit will leave you and you start to live in sin. So please, please let us mind our desires, our thoughts, and what can say we receive. As she said, the movie was we watched yesterday was really, really uh a pointer to the fact that any person can mislead you. May the, if you are not careful, may the Lord help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you all for your contributions.
We continue still. This one will clarify further what we have said. Our uh, desires can change. Desires can change. Pastor Innocent just talked about the mother and the kind of we can be disposed to. Our desires can from our desire. It means that our temptations can change because our desires can change. And if our desires can change, it means it can be changed in the way that reduces or release the temptation to do wrong. How to change our desire deserves an entire discussion. Avoid it. The other part of what James wants to say about our desire of is that we are tempted when we are dragged away by those desires and enticed. Yes. Yes, that enticement. You need money. Temptation come. Just, you know, there's a play, there's one man. If you give him $1,000, you know, you know, with him, we, we, you know, get uh, maybe $5,000. <laughs> they are like, give us like that. You know? he, he has a way, he trades, he trades, and they will tell you some story around it. You believe it. And give your 1,000. And one week later, you may not see anything anymore. So, mm -hmm. the temptation just comes because you need money. And some fake pastors, they capitalize on that. You need money? Okay. All that you have now, have faith in God. Have faith in God. All that you have now, just bring it to me. And see, the next one day or two, what will happen? You get double another. Deception. Deception. Because you need money. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. Amen. For what you all have said, one thing is very pertinent. Ultimately, the word of God that you know is what will help you. Yes. That is what I just summed up in my mind. Look, and that is why you have to have interest in Bible studies like this. You have to grow onto maturity. Otherwise, you don't rely on friends, rely on, on men of God, women of God, and all that. They may fail you because the church is a mixed multitude. You have the genuine children of God there. You have fake, fake believers there. Hypocrites are there. Children of the devil are right. They are there. So there's a mixed multitude. That is why it's delicate and dangerous. Because some of these people you rely on, they are the one that can even be the source of your temptation. Like we saw last time about the young prophet and the old prophet. He could resist temptation. An unbeliever said, come to my house. No, 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 you are not a believer. God told me this. But a senior prophet, an old prophet, he just, just lied. lied. He just put it like that. An angel just appeared to me, you no, know, and said, You should just come to my house. Just religious. Religious. He looks religious, he looks believable. He's a senior prophet, and he just seen a vision. Think about that. So, ultimately, the word of God that you know that will help you. In overcoming temptation. So, uh -huh. my appeal to everyone is that we should really desire to know the word of God, the will yes. of God. Because yes. when temptations come, sometimes it can be very dicey. And you think uh, men of God, women of God, brothers and sisters, you are safe in their hands. You are supposed to be safe in their hands, but it's not always so because of the missed multitude factor. Yes, and if praise you don't understand God. that, we can go and read Matthew chapter 13. Yes, sir. Praise the God. The kingdom sir. of God is like a man who says good wheat, who stay in his farm. Very good, no problem about it. But at midnight, and then he has sowed bad seed. That's how Jehovah became wheat. 
Imagine ah. at midnight, this time of darkness when Satan works most. Yes. yes. But the farmer so very good thing. So that's to tell you about the kingdom of God. It's not mm -hmm. all to claim they are children of God, they are children of God indeed. Some are outright agents of Satan to lead people back to the world or into deception or into backsliding. Mm -hmm. So we have to be discerning. It's the word of God that we know that will help us. Like Jesus overcame with the word of God. So renew your mind with the word of God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Sir, sir. Yes. Yeah, but, sir, let, me, let me say something. By the job by the wayside. Mm -hmm. uh, that senior prophet, uh, the junior prophet, long before this uh, uh, teaching, yes. when I read it long ago, I talked about it. I said that that prophet, God told him specifically, go to this place and come. Don't eat, too. don't drink, too. then you met somebody on the way, and a senior prophet who now told you with his mouth that don't worry, God also spoke to me that uh, you should come in and eat in my house. Mm. So we are still, still boils down to clarity. Why did the prophet now, uh, why did he not say no? When God told me not to eat, he spoke to me. <laughs> so now he has not, God has not spoken to me to follow you, period. So I thought about it a long time ago, ever before this teaching. You know? So okay. that boils down to clarity on the on the Bible. So <laughs> if God spoke to you direct that, do this thing or instruct you to do a, a thing, then somebody else say, okay, because I'm a senior pastor, I'm a this, you, you uh, do it this way, God will not be angry. No. Now say, no, God did not instruct. God instructed me. So let me do that. If God changes his mind, he will also instruct me. That's that my own. Uh, yes. Uh, yes. My, my sister, to get to that level requires real maturity. Yes, yes. Real maturity. Yes. Because yes. now you say, oh, look, this is senior. This is a mentor. This is a mentor. The person has been for me. He knows everything more than I do. So yes. that's why he just believes. He's a brother now. You will only take that I will live instantly. That's where you can No. Okay, can I, can I ask a question? What the pastor said there, if it's God, you can only reach out to God. Why do you now not go back to God? That is why the Bible says David is a man of God's hope. Because if it is David, you will fire for God. This man came. Thank you, sir. Uh, there's, there's a, on the last paragraph on five say, how can we change our desires? And it says it deserves another entire article. Sir, I wanted to please uh, lay emphasis on that, how to change our desires. Because it's very, very uh, crucial. Since it is desire that leads us to sin, how can we change it? How can we, what can we do so that we don't uh, go into uh, that? Again, people are going to quote scriptures for us. 
If the enemy wants to, just like the enemy quoted scriptures for Jesus and say, I showed him the glory of the world, the world and said, jump down from this place. For it is written that God will give his angels charge of you. And Jesus was wise enough in the spirit to say, get ye behind me, Satan. Otherwise, it's true that it's written that and just will take care of us. So when we meet older prophets or any person like I have said before, whatever oh. answer they give to you, please compare it with the word of God, which you have known from the beginning. Just like our pastor said, uh, that is why knowing the word of God and the, attending Bible studies like this is very important. So with reference to uh, hearing from older prophets or senior men of God, let us uh, look at Jeremiah 35, 6 to 19. Jeremiah 35, 6 to 19. Sometimes if I have issues bothering me, I call Pastor John again and say, look at the situation. What do I do? He gives me his counsel. I call another brother. He gives, that one gives me his counsel. And I go back and compare. What does the word of God say? If the word of God does not agree with what he any of this men of God tells me, I am not going to take it. Respectfully decline. Sorry, I couldn't go that way because the, the word of God does not say so. If when Jeremiah 35, 6 to 19, can you please read? Jeremiah 35, 6 to 19. Yes, please. Then they said, we will drink no wine. For Jonadab, the son of Rechab, our father, commanded us, saying, Ye shall drink no wine, neither ye nor your sons forever. Neither shall ye build house, nor sow seed, nor plant vineyard, nor have any. But all your days ye shall dwell in tents, that ye may live many days in the land where ye be strangers. Thus have we obeyed the voice of Jonadab, the son of Rachel, our father, in all that he had charged us to drink no wine all our days, we, our wives, our sons, nor our daughters, nor to build houses for us to dwell in. Neither have we vineyard, nor field, nor seeds, but we have dwelt in tents, and have obeyed and done according to all that Jonadab our father commanded us. But it came to pass when Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came up into the land that we said, Come and let us go to Jerusalem for fear of the army of the Chaldeans and for fear of the army of the Syrians. So we dwell at Jerusalem. Then came the word of the Lord unto Jeremiah, saying, Thus said the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, go and tell the men of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, will ye not receive instruction to hearken to my words, says the Lord. The words of Jonadab, the son of Rechab, that he commanded his sons not to drink wine, are performed. For unto this day they drink none, but obey their father's commandment. Notwithstanding, I have spoken unto you, rising early and speaking, that ye hearken not unto me. I have sent also unto you all my servants, the prophets, rising up early and sending them, saying, Return ye now every man from his evil way and amend your doings, and go not after other gods to serve them. And ye shall dwell in the land which I have given to you and to your fathers. But ye have not inclined your ear, nor hearkened unto me. Because the sons of Jonadab, the sons, the son of Rechab, have performed the commandment of their father, mm -hmm. which he commanded them. But these people had not hearkened unto them. That's the end. Thank you very much. Okay. The when their father had told them not to drink wine, had told them how to live, what to do. So when the prophet came to them to say, drink wine, 
They said, no, our father said we should not drink wine. Mm -hmm. Our father said so. If you compare that scripture to what is happening today, how men of God are supposed to live, live in tents, do this one, do that one. You discover that we men of God, some of us men of God today have completely deviated from God's standard for men of God. Mm -hmm. We now want to own properties. We, we measure our successes in ministry to how many cars we have, the size of our auditorium, and the clothes we wear, and uh, our Jeff. whereas Jeff. the print from the beginning is drink no wine, live in tents, don't build houses. <laughs> then the Lord will help us. Amen. We will decide to go back to the scriptures always yes. to compare what does God say? What is expected of me as a pastor? What is expected of me as a child of God? For goodness sake, I was first a child of God, a believer, before becoming a pastor. What does the word of God expect me as a, to do as a believer? Not by his grace, he has called me to a higher office to, re, to be able to represent the people before him. What does he expect me to do? Humility. Prayerful. Obedient to his word of God, to his word. Look at the children of Rechabad. They remembered what their father told, told them not to drink wine. But we, children of God, we don't remember. Mm -hmm. Oh, the flow of the things of the world. This is science. Mm -hmm. This is what is invoked. This is what is trending. In this ministry, we are out by his grace to live by the standard of the scripture. Amen. Amen. We don't go astray mm -hmm. so that we meet, we'll be able to stand before the judgment truth of God for this. That is why we are going into these deep areas where many other bodies don't go into. Our father said, drink no wine. The unbelievers will say, give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar. Uh -huh. they, they, they said, when they want to persuade you to drink alcohol or do all that, they will say, uh, Paul said to Timothy, Drink little wine for the sake of your stomach. And when I tell me such, I say, my friend, tell me, I don't have stomach pains now. And I'll ask you that want to take little wine. Do you have stomach pain now? So let us always compare scriptures. Go back to scriptures so that you will not be led astray. May the Lord help mm -hmm. us. So the question is, how can we change our desires? That is what I want you to please concentrate on so that we are properly guided. Praise the Lord. Amen. And yes. I'd, like to, I'd like to make a, is the contribution. It's just like the, the God's scripture and God's word, uh, you know, to say, uh, no, don't drink alcohol. Uh, and 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 don't go eat uh, where that where that uh, the uh, prophet the senior prophet said come come with me uh, that that drinking and uh, just doing what the God tells you to do it uh, it's it's uh, is protection upon the person because that junior prophet when he went back the way he was supposed to do after he went to the uh, senior uh, prophet's house and ate and drank he uh, he got killed he he didn't make it back so. I think it was just God's protection upon uh, on on him, and 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 the and the people that uh, were were told not to drink alcohol, uh, and or or wine, you know, they, they but they but they uh, said uh, we're not uh, going to do that. Okay, so they 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 were protected, you know, and the the decisions they made. Uh, so that's that's what I have to say. <laughs> Yeah. Thank you, brother. Thank you, brother. Thank you for the contribution.
Today's session is very lively. Thank you for all that you're saying. Now, how to really overcome temptation. The word of God, Romans 12, 1 to 2. Let somebody read. Romans 12, 1 to 2. There's no gimmick about it. Is following the word of God. Romans 12, 1 to 2. I beseech you here for prayer. Romans 12, 1 to 2. Yes. I yeah. Therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is, what is that good and acceptable and perfect and perfect will of God. Amen. The answer to Amen. the question read such a page 7 verse 13. The answer is just there. Number one, knowing God's word has all resist temptation. Renew your mind. How do you renew your mind? And why should you renew your mind? You renew it. Once upon a time, you are not a believer. And you had him looking at the things of this world. Yes. You know this This is what is really, this is what everybody does. So this is what I will also do as a non believer. Now, as a Christian, the word of to be the one what to do. The problem is not that it comes to what to do. The problem is disobedience. You know what God has said. There are so many things that are so clear in the word of God. Why do people come to the world today? Is it because they don't know what the word of God condemns it? No. They, they want to satisfy the desire of the flesh. So temptation itself is not the same, but when you fall into it, that's when it becomes sin. So fear of God is cardinal. You can write that. Down. You need to have fear of God. Believer need to have fear of God. The fear of God is men and women to come out from evil. The fear of God makes you to. Put God first. We go like this thing I want to do. We go like this thing I want to say. We go like this thing I want to say. But why don't have In fact, your heart desire, your fleshly desire is what you want to satisfy. If you have the fear of God, you want to do the will of God. So that is when you your mind, you know the will of God. And uh, the situations uh, where we, there are no specific instructions uh, as to whether uh, what you want to do is right. I think your phone is closed and disturbing. Praise the Lord. This research case I told you, you Philippians 4, verse 8. Let somebody read that. Where there is no specific instruction. Against what you tend to do or say, mm. and there's and doubt about God. it. You use you Philippians 4, God. verse 8 to take a decision. Let's have a read Philippians 4, verse 8. Philippians 4, verse 8. Finally, whatsoever things are true. Whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. Amen. Praise the Lord. Read it, meditate upon that scripture to always help you where the Bible is not so clear. 
as to what you need to do in a particular situation. Read that and that will guide you. Number two, self-control. We talk about the fruit of the spirit. We talk about self-control, temperance. If you don't have self-control, you're like a city without walls, no protection. Anything goes. Temptation to eat, even to overeat. You can overcome that with self-control. You see a lot of food presented before you in a party. You are actually, you are actually very hungry. Your food is delicious. Temptation is coming. Take this, take that, take that, take from everything there to satisfy you presently. But self-control is no. If I take too much of this and that and that now, I may have problems. Self-control is very important. And that one comes from the fruit of the spirit. You have the fruit of the spirit. When you grow into maturity, you know how to exercise self-control in everything. The association and company you keep. We have talked about that one. Tell me your friends and I'll tell you who you are. Birds of the same feathers flock together. People who don't value holiness. They don't, they don't have the fear of God. They are your friends. You are going to be like them. If your best friend is an adulterer, I'm afraid of you. Even you. Your best friend is an adulterer. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter, but I benefit from him or her. Because you are contravening the word of God, evil association, corrupt, good manner. Your taste and desire determined by the word of God that you know. As a child of God, know who you are. You are a child of God. Once you were in darkness, now you are in the light. Once you are non believer, now you are God's representative. You are God's ambassador. You are light. You are salt of the earth. You ought, you ought to be different from others. God has made all peculiar people. We would rather take that, you know, we like to quote that scripture, say, hey, we are a royal priesthood. You are a royal priesthood. You are a peculiar people. As if we are, we are children, we are just singing this song. Royal priesthood, a peculiar people. What makes you peculiar? Ask yourself, what makes me peculiar? If God says I'm a peculiar person, what makes me peculiar? Because I don't want to just go by the details of the flesh. Anything that people of the world they do, I do it. I'm peculiar because I'm out to please God. I want to examine everything before I take decision to know whether it's in line with the word of God yeah. and will of God. So your taste and desire Taste for parties. Will you have such taste anymore? You are a Christian, born again. Bible say old taste have passed away. But if you are evil friend, they can still lure you back. It doesn't matter, you know. It just once, ah, once a year we have this party. Just once a year. That party provides, and if that party may not be good for you, and so you have to discern whether you. How to go to that party or not. Because the environment you meet there, you, you find there, can lead you to sin. It depends on the kind of party anyway. So you have to be discerning, have the fear of God. With a renewed mind, you know what is the will of God. Consciousness of who you are. I am not a mere man. I am a child of God. I'm a peculiar person. I belong to a royal family. We have code of conduct. We have Christian ethics. Don't cheat. Don't extort money from people. People are extorting money from people today. You know because they don't know that it's a sin. But because they don't have self-control, and they want to gratify the desire of the flesh. 
The right desire surrounding reduce the chance of temptation. For example, I've often said this about a particular man of God who he knew his weak points. When he was a non-believer, he knew how he was he could easily be seduced by the opposite sex and used to go to public um, pools to, to enjoy himself, public pool, where you see a lot of people, young and old, everybody, almost in naked form. Now, when he became converted and got called into ministry, he gave himself that rule, personal rule. God did not just say, I shall not go to a public pool. And, he knew, this is my weak point to, if I go there, I'm likely to be tempted again. Therefore, henceforth, son of man, don't go there anymore. Personal, this is just personal to him. It's not a general law anywhere. You cannot see in the Bible. Personal to him, based on his track, based on his own history. That look, if I'm in such an environment, I'm likely to be tricked or tripped into temptation. For example, what, what kind of music do you listen to? An unbeliever may invite you to his house and they are playing ungodly music because of an unbeliever. You, you, you listen to the music, it can only seduce you because music, you have good music, you have godly music, you have Christian music, you have ungodly music that can seduce. This music, they are dedicated to Satan. That whosoever listens to the or does it to it is polluted and can even be enslaved into sin, especially sexual immorality. Yes. And you are in such a place. What do you do? Avoid anything that can lead you to sin, including music. That is not godly. That is seductive. There are some people, some Christians, who can get seduced because you are living in the friend's house and what you listen to most of the time is ungodly music. Mm -hmm. Yes, it can make some people to backslide. Because day after day, you don't have control over it. You don't just, I just visited a friend and uh, that abuse is playing. But day after day, day after day, day after day, you begin to have horrible dreams. You begin to have different things. Pornography, for example. Whether you like it or not, on your phone or your on your tablet, they just pop up. They just pop up. You have to be disciplined mm -hmm. to learn how to take a second look at them. Just discipline, self-control. Yes. So these are some of the things we need. So the fear of God is very important. Flee from every appearance of evil. Flee, run. Like Joseph ran. Sure. You don't just say, no, 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 no. And then stay there, stay there and begin to still meditate. Run yes. for your real life. Anything you know that's evil, if I'm there, if I'm in this place, I'm likely to be tempted. I don't want to tell you details, but Holy Spirit will always do that. The way yes. you are we sensitive to the leading of the Holy Spirit who is our helper? Holy Spirit speaks mainly through the still small voice, a gentle small voice within you. I tell you, this is what you need to do, my daughter. Don't do this. Don't do this. But if you are not sensitive, you do what you like, what your flesh likes, and lead you to trouble. So massive can be avoided. Well, this will be tell you, slow down, my son. I know you are getting late, but slow down at this moment. Don't say, oh, I'm rushing late, I'm getting late. So, ah, you don't want to listen to that small voice? You may get into trouble. So, one of the most important things I would recommend is be sensitive to the leading of the Holy Spirit in your life. Sensitivity is very, very, very yes. important. Yes, very because it's better to avoid temptation than to overcome temptation. Yes. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yes. Thank you okay. very much.
Bible says, let those that have ears hear what the Spirit says to the church. All right. The leading of the Holy Spirit. What a wonderful day. We are running out of time again. We are going to stop at this point. Next week, by the no, let me ask, please, please, because this is what I do every morning along with my prayers. I always pray. I say, I will say, Holy Spirit, today help me to discern good from bad, good from evil. Holy Spirit, help me. I will always add it to my prayers yeah. every morning. So you tell the Holy Spirit to help you discern good from evil, so that you will flee from the evil. Amen. Secondly, sir, sorry, you are taking time. It's a Secondly, good uh, yes, secondly, the, in Romans 12, we are asked to present ourselves as a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God. I want, in this aspect, I want to address it to consciousness of whom we are as a child of God. Particularly the our we women and our daughters, the way we dress, you will see a, a, a woman or a girl wearing clothes. It, it will barely cover your laps. It will barely cover your chest. Then you go out like that. Even if you don't fall into temptation, you are making others to fall into temptation. And by dressing like that, you are attracting. Evil ones, like the drunkards, they will talk to you. The uh, cultists, they will talk to you. And because they will see you as one of them. But if you dress modestly, covering your body properly as a living sacrifice, and they will look at you. Mm -mm. They won't come to you. Reasonable people, with, you will attract reasonable people and godly people. They will say, oh, this one seems a Christian. They will come to you. But if you dress... You know, it's the way of it's the way of the world. That is what is raining. And now so that's how they saw it now. This one. You'll be putting yourself in undue uh, temptation. Bad people will come to you. And if you are not strong enough, you will be straight away. So we women and we should always be conscious of this dressing because as soon as God just comes like you are dressed like that, and God comes. Will you be using her to draw your uh, 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 shirt down, uh, draw your blouse up? So we should always be conscious of our dressing. Never mind what is trending, uh, the fashion today, this one. But we should not be carried away. We should dress modestly. Praise and the Lord. Our... Hallelujah. Yes. Yes. Thank you so much. That's very correct. A man of God has said, dress as you want to be addressed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Dress as you want to be addressed. Yes. yes. Thank you so much, my sister. God bless you. Amen. Right. Thank you very much. We are always running out of time. Uh, dress as you want to be addressed. Amen. Because Amen. who you are. I'm going to pray again. God, help me to design the will of the Holy Spirit. Very yes. important. In every situation. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Help me, not Lord, to... help me, oh Lord, to have a discerning heart. Lord, to know right Lord, help me wrong. To discern the will of the Holy Spirit. Help me to control. With grace, oh Lord, to exercise self-control. Act according to the Father. Help me to the things of the world. Help me, O God, to take decisive your leadership in my life. Oh, be a particular person, O God. Help me to know who I am. Help me to subdue the flesh. Not be a source of temptation to others. Help me, O Lord. Attitude, others, and the lives of others that are not control my reaction. Help me to the power of the Holy Spirit to be able to control my reaction. Because I have no excuse for sin. I have no excuse for sin. Help me to be patient. Zero tolerance for sin. 
help me help over this to this program, this program and everyone that is on this side watch my eyes to be able to music i listen to with my ears Places I go to all over with my legs. Me alone. control. Bless that be your name, O Lord. To me, O Lord, my sisters. Give me grace. Our Father and our God, we thank you for what you have taught us today. Help us, O God, to descend your way. Help us, O Lord, not to give in to our desires, to control our desires. Help us, O God, to know whom we are. Help us, O God, to be obedient to your word. Because Amen. the word is not sufficient. It's application of it that makes it reality. Help us, O God, to apply your word in every situation. There are false prophets who are older than us. There are false teachers who are older than us in ministry. Help us, oh God, that even when we hear from them, we shall compare their counsel to the word of God. Amen. Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord, we pray, oh Lord, that you will help us in all our doings. Amen. Father, help us uh, uh, to live for you. Provide for us all that we need. So that we will not be tempted to go after them in diverse ways. In the right. Every door that we may have opened for the enemies to afflict us, we plead the blood of Jesus and we ask if they, they, such doors be sealed with the blood of Jesus that will be safe and protected in the house of the Lord. Yes. Amen. Thank you, Father, for answering our prayers. For in Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Surely, God's goodness God and mercy shall follow us the days of our lives. Of our lives. Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, Amen. the Lord of God, the Father, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit, rest and abide with us now forevermore. Amen. 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 Thank you very much for finding time to be with us this evening. We pray that the Lord will guide us and help us to discern what is good and proper at every time. Amen. Um, when you, Amen. Our recordings, please, please make effort to share to everyone on your platform. You don't know who we are interested in it and want to show up and benefit from it. Again, let it be mm -hmm. your source of evangelism to share the word of God with people on social media. Once again, thank you. Look forward to seeing you same time next week. God bless you Amen. and have a good night. Bye -bye. Good night, Bye. Bye. Good night. Godliness with contentment is it is 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 that will help you in financial area of temptations. Mm -hmm. Godliness with contentment is great. Yes. Good yes. night, everyone. God bless you. Good night. Bye. Good night. <laughs> Love you all. Okay. Okay. God bless Bye. you. Amen. 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 Well done, sir. I'm well, God bless yeah. you. Thank Amen. you. Yeah. Have a good night. Hi, Zee. Oh, Mama, and your Mama. Amen. Hi, baby. It is good. Thank God. To God be all the glory. Amen. Is where are you here now? Grandma, hi, your Omugo. You are taking now pepper soup. I have pepper soup now. Brother, we are trying to learn how to cook and how to cook to eat.